Hello, guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Crooked Illness. I'm so excited today because I have a special guest for you guys. This person is so special because she has been um, doing something that I'm, I've been a part of, and I'm super excited to get into this conversation and highlight what she is up to. So I have Samantha Foster here today. She is the founder of Rethink Mental Health Incorporated, or it's also known as Rethink Stigma on social media. And I'm super excited for her to tell us all about what this is, you know, what it, what it means, why she created it, you know, where the inspiration came from for creating this nonprofit organization. So let's get into it. So welcome Sam to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. This is, this is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. So kind of, let's just dive right in. So tell us about sure. what is Rethink Stigma and then also kind of tell us a little bit more about you and kind of, you know, give us a little bit more background on you and kind of the organization and whatever you want to share in these details. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so Rethink Mental Health Incorporated is a nonprofit organization our mission is to improve the way society views and treats mental health. And we do that via three avenues, essentially. Our first being advocacy, mental health advocacy, and our core initiative is the Advocate Program, which you are a fantastic member of. Um, the Advocate Program invites all of, uh, just anybody who is passionate about combating the stigma on mental health, advocating for others, being a voice for the voiceless, um, and you get to join this fantastic, literal global team, almost pushing a hundred advocates now. Um, wow. to Right. That's so exciting. <laughs> and it went, what um, year did you found uh, Rethink Stigma? I founded Rethink Stigma in uh, 2018. The advocate program is just uh, hitting its year anniversary. So yeah, yeah. almost a hundred advocates within the first year of its, of its existence, which is fantastic. Um, and, uh, and yeah, Yay. really, <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Um, it's, it's been an incredible growth that, that initiative, which again is, is one of the main kind of avenues that we share our initiatives. We share different messages and stories, different themes each month, as you, you're very aware of, um, to focus on outreach and really sharing as much information to destigmatize, normalize and support as we possibly can. Wow. And you guys, you guys know that this show right here, Crooked Illness is all about mental health and mindset. So once I actually, I actually became an advocate with Reading Stigma and then I got to know Sam and I got to know more about the organization and all of the awesome stuff that she is doing. So I just, I knew I was like, I have to have her come <laughs> on here and talk about this because, you know, just like she said, anyone can become an advocate, right? To really, you know, sh share your story and kind of be that voice for people who feel like they aren't comfortable. Um, speaking up or talking about these things. And it's just such a truly a cr an incredible community with such amazing individuals who are all coming together, you know, with this one interest in mind of mental health and really helping to normalize this and make these conversations more normalized and less stigmatized. And that is what Sam is doing. And I'm just so excited. So tell us more about, you know, the awesome things that we are doing here with Rethink Stigma and any of the upcoming upcoming events that are coming out. Oh, oh, I think I know what you're alluding to there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, so we have a ton of different kind of interactive initiatives. We have our old support method, which is a concept that it's an acronym for how to best support others with mental health. Sometimes it's a mystery when we know someone in our family, our friend group who's struggling, we don't know how to approach that um, appropriately. We want to make sure that we're giving good support without crossing lines or without misleading someone. Um, so the all support method gives everyone a guideline for that. That's one avenue. We have our seven day kindness challenge to promote everyone just doing simple acts of kindness and how empathy and inclusion can make such a huge difference in our society. And as far as events, um, this year we are hosting our first ever benefit concert on December 4th. It's a Saturday, December 4th of this year at the Las Vegas Brooklyn Bowl, right on the Las Vegas Strip. We're so incredibly excited. Um, it's going to be a, a, a live concert. Uh, as many as possible of our advocates are going to be there and uh, participate in the show as well. Um, so it's going to be a wonderful event of just fun celebration, especially after the, the now it would be two years or a year and a half that we've been through as, as a society to really just come together and celebrate life and health moving forward. 
That is so exciting. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I'm just, I love it so much. And also you guys need to check out their Instagram page. It is rethink stigma. And what I really love about the page is I always, I always see you guys, you know, coming up in my feed and I love it because you have this, it's a post that they do. So when you go on the page, you guys will see it. So it says, turn the page on your mental health. And it has a page is being flipped and it has an old me version and then a new me version. And I love the examples that you give. And, you know, one of them that, that we have on here is the old me, right? So being worried that no one would love me if they knew I struggled. Right. And then the new me is recognize that my struggles do not make me unworthy of love and I deserve acceptance. And I love this because it really helps to, you know, visually, uh, display these things. Cause I'm all like, I'm such a big like list person. I love seeing photos and things like that. And I think this is a great way to really, you know, show people, you know, someone might be looking at that and, you know, have, have struggled with anxiety or depression or, or maybe just be in it in a bad moment in that day and see that and say, wow, you know, this is really helping to kind of just develop new habits or ways of looking at things. And I really love that. So, you know, talk, talk to me about, you know, the, like what, where did that come from? Like, how did you kind of get develop the concept for, you know, putting that out there on social media? Cause I really just, I love it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So this month, March, and um, every year, we kind of have this annual calendar um, that dissects each month into certain themes. Um, there's so many different subcategories and subtopics of mental health that I find it the best way to be able to address so many of them is to kind of compartmentalize. I too am a list gal, um, <laughs> a list and spreadsheets gal. <laughs> yeah. So um, the theme in March is negative or unhealthy and also healthy coping mechanisms. Um, and it's one of our more serious themes for lack of a better term, um, because we're really exposing some of the, um, the habits that we get into when we're trying to deal with our mental health and we're just struggling in life. And, um, it's very, very, very common for us to cope by, by, you know, drinking, by, by abusing drugs, um, self-harm, um, you know, uh, eating disorders. These are all common things, but they're also these kind of ugly things that a lot of us try to hide. And sometimes our road to recovery for our mental health can be even more, um, restricted because we also carry shame of how we're currently coping with our mental health. So we're trying to bring light to the fact that these types of negative coping skills, and, and that includes, you know, feeling this, this kind of, lack of self-compassion and fear that people won't accept you. It's another way that we kind of hate on ourselves. And the reality is it doesn't have to be that way. So wow. we're, we're shedding light on that. Yeah. I love that. I love that outlook, especially when you talk about, you know, the negative coping mechanisms that we might use to deal with something else that's going on. Right. And I really love those examples you bring up of, you know, trying to self-medicate, you know, mm -hmm. like, like drinking so much or just do like excessively going out, spending money, doing all these things mm -hmm. that, you know, we're doing cause we're trying to deal with something else, but it's almost kind of still kind of masking it, right. Trying to, mm -hmm. but also still not wanting to really, you know, share that with other people, but trying to somehow get through, whatever it may be we're dealing with, whether it be like a traumatic event, you know, something that happened in our lives, like losing somebody or whatever it may be, you know, mm -hmm. trying to cope with that, I think is amazing because, you know, we're bringing this more to attention and kind of normalizing yeah. it. I think an important thing to know, like when talking about mental health is, you know, you guys, we don't always have to have, you know, like a diagnosis, right. Or like, mm -hmm. we don't always have to, you know, have been to a psychiatric hospital like I have, or have mm -hmm. been, you know, into multiple medications and doctors and clinics and all these things. We all have moments in our lives when we just aren't feeling our best, you know, when we may yeah. be sad, when we may be down, overwhelmed, stressed out. And I think the main thing that I think is really important with this, that you do such a good job of is making this more of something that is more normalized and not something that is so stigmatized and that we need to hide or that we shouldn't yeah. talk about or that we shouldn't bring up. Or, you know, if we do get into these conversations, then we'll, we'll be shamed or judged or looked at differently because, mm -hmm. you know, I think it just is kind of helping. And I think that's why I really love the 
the the nonprofit organization Rethink Stigma, all of all of it and everything that you guys are doing because it's just it's making more opportunities for more people to get involved, right? To yeah. to be an advocate. And also another thing I really like that you guys do is you have quizzes. The mm-hmm. quizzes. So I'd love if you could kind of, you know, share that with me and talk about, you know, yeah. what the quizzes are and how you came to create them. Totally. Now our quizzes are such a fun way to interact. And again, it's on that same level of just normalizing and really addressing these topics in a more approachable, interactive way. Um, and, and I just want to definitely reiterate that you're so correct that at the very core of our organization is the concept that we all have mental health. We may not all have a diagnosis. We may not all have a clinical mental illness, but we all, everyone that is living and breathing has mental health the same way they have physical health. So we are just, we're subject to adversity. We're subject to bad days. We're subject to dealing with tough times. And if we neglect to admit that, that's, that's the first step in going down a path of, you know, finding ourselves in worse health, really, just like if we were to neglect, you know, signs of deteriorating physical health. So we, we definitely approach things from that angle. In fact, we have a, uh, a quiz about the relationship or the comparison between physical health and mental health as kind of a, uh, a challenge to yourself to see how much you can spot the alignments between those two in a both metaphorical and literal way. Um, wow. But we I have, it. <laughs> we have a ton of quizzes and polls. Um, we have a mental health check, which is super great um, and can be a great tool that you could use every day for your own usage, just to kind of, again, like keep in touch with how you're feeling. <clears throat> Um, we have stigma quizzes so you can kind of understand the stigma. We have a quiz about anxiety uh, versus depression. I'm sorry, anxiety versus stress uh, that one of our advocates created actually. So there's a ton on there, kind of whatever avenue you're looking for, whether it be more to like hone in on your own insight up to how you're feeling, whether it's to help you learn more about mental health and wow. about stigma. And, and all yeah. of these quizzes can be found at breathingstigma.org, right? Yes. Perfect. Yes. And oh my gosh, I just, I love how you are like basically making this something that is moving away from being more problem focused when it comes to mental health and more towards solution focused. Cause that's something yeah. that I definitely found, you know, personally in myself is, you know, when I was really, really struggling really badly, you know, at 19 years old, 18, 19, 20, you know, that time in my life, you know, I feel like there was so much more attention on, you know, things that weren't working right with with the person, right? Like you're Mm -hmm. dealing with this, you're overwhelmed by this, you're struggling with this. And it almost seems like so much of the focus is on what's wrong, but not a Mm -hmm. lot of focus is on how to fix it, right? How to like manage this, how to, you know, move forward in your life. And that was something that I really loved about what you, what you're doing is, you know, you're, Mm -hmm. you're doing all of these different things and have all these different components that are coming together to really make this something that shows people that it is possible to, you know, to be able to come out of these struggles that we find ourselves in. And, you know, and it's perfectly normal and it's perfectly okay to, to find ourselves in these struggles, you guys too, you know, it's not like, you know, if you're, if you're going through something or you have, you know, like you said, whether or not you have a diagnosis or, you know, an actual, you know, diagnosed uh, mental illness or not, you know, it's okay to, you know, learn more about this stuff and actually like mm-hmm. dive into it if you're interested and you want to help and you have a story because that's what I really love too is just, you know, really, really what I love so much about crooked illness is just being able to bring people like you on here and talk about these experiences, talk yeah. about these resources, you know, talk about, you know, your story and what got you to want to even do this. And that's really what I love sure. featuring because I feel like it just brings back so much hope into people who might feel they've lost it, you know, who might feel, you know, I've tried all these different things or, you know, I feel like I've reached so many dead ends and nothing's working and it's also overwhelming. I feel like you do a really good job of of shedding light on the ways that we can actually, you know, care for ourselves in a way that is going to be helpful rather than harmful. And you Mm -hmm. you just do it in such a way that is, you know, relatable and fun and makes these conversations more engaging rather than something that, you don't want to get into or that you yeah. are, you know, too embarrassed to talk about or ask about. So, yeah. you know, tell me about kind of like, you know, what, what was it that got you to want to start Rethink Stigma? Yeah, no, um, thank you. First of all, that's so on point and correct. And it just beautifully said about the organization. So thank you. Um, yeah, of course. But, um, 
and and I am not a um, I, I am not without, of course, my own my own mental health history that led me to this. So um, I'll try and it's <laughs> it's not like a one sentence deal, but <laughs> <laughs> of course. But um, no, I, I struggled with mental health since childhood, um, and I grew up in a very broken home um, that I later found to be extremely emotionally abusive. Um, but at the time, I just thought that I was the one that was with all the problems, that I was too sensitive. Um, and I was put in therapy and on medication very young. Um, I was falsely diagnosed with bipolar. Um, so from the age of 12 to 22, I was on an ever-changing cocktail of medication um, that never worked because it turns out I, I did not have bipolar disorder, but rather a borderline personality disorder. Um, and when I was about 22, after really truly reaching rock bottom and just being hopeless because had I been bipolar, had bipolar rather, I still say that, <laughs> <laughs> from my old, see my old habits when I was in that space, I again was so defeated by my mental health because I, again, had tried for 10 years, different strategies, different medications, different therapists, and nothing was making progress. And in fact, the side effects of the medications were making way more of an impact as well. Um, and ultimately at my rock bottom, uh, I went into a, a clinic, an inpatient uh, facility uh, where I was completely stripped of a majority of the medications, um, detoxed and rediagnosed ex excessively <laughs> um, and was able to be you know, given the proper guidance, put on the right path of the right type of therapy for borderline personality disorder. And um, I've had the therapists say that I'm in remission. I don't like to claim that because that's, that's even to me, that's too black and white. And I think that's, that's kind of a big part of too noting the continuum of mental health, that it's not sick or well, because even as the person who has mental health, if you fall into that thought process of I'm better than when you have a bad day, it feels so much worse Then we're just still all just moving in this continuum and we can improve, but it doesn't mean there's not going to be setbacks or bad days or new adversities that challenge us in different ways. Wow. I, I just, I relate to you so much and I feel like so many different ways, especially when you bring up the, the part about being misdiagnosed, right. For, mm -hmm. you know, with bipolar and then eventually, you know, finding out that it's borderline personality. Cause I was also misdiagnosed as well. So I remember, be, mm -hmm. I remember being 16, um, I was actually diagnosed with depression. And then at 19 was when I was hospitalized and diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And it actually, mm -hmm. and I feel like this is such a common thing that I hear, you know, in conversations and, you know, when I do have conversations, with people about this. And, you know, when they do share their stories with me, you know, some of them say, you know, well, I was misdiagnosed and I, you know, I've been on, you know, all kinds of different medications. And like you said, you know, the side effects from those medications and like the impact that that's having on you and just your experience, even just being alive and just ha noticing mm -hmm. that. So, you know, I'm just, I'm so happy that you, you know, are on here right now and just sharing the story because I think it's like so important to, you know, continue to talk more about this, right? Because, yeah. you know, if it's not, it's not like we're trying to, you know, place blame on anybody for, you know, misdiagnosed us like oh it's well it's you know it's your fault and no because at the time you know at least for me from in my experience you know at the time when I was that age and what I was dealing with at that time to um, the person who gave me the diagnosis that's what it looked like that's what it appeared sure. like that's what it you know there's no other way to know bes besides me um, telling what my experience is right so mm -hmm. but if I'm not comfortable with that and I'm not comfortable sharing or saying anything else, then of course it's going to seem a certain way. So I think that's like a really beautiful thing too, just to understand that, you know, it's, it's an ever like a consistent process, right? It's not like we're, you know, we're saying, you know, I'm better or like I'm healed or, you know, yeah. I'm cured from this or whatever it is, <laughs> but just knowing that, you know, you're just do, taking the steps necessary and you're actually taking care of ourselves because I can tell you, you know, back when, you know, when I was 19, I was hospitalized. I was not taking care of myself at all. And I love how you bring up that aspect of mental health and physical health, because I mm -hmm. literally love stressing this so much because you guys know this, you know, when, when we're not taking care of our minds or our bodies, then of course, you know, you, you wouldn't think, you know, if I'm, you know, feeling this like horribly about myself physically, and I'm not, you know, eating the right things or, you know, exercising or drinking water, all these things. And of course you're not probably gonna 
you know, be the happiest person and like ready mm-hmm. to go and just live life. You know, we need to understand that it's, you know, it's a, there's so many things that go into play here, you know, when it, when it comes to maintaining our mental health, you know, taking care mm-hmm. of our physical body, taking care of, you know, our minds and what we're consuming, right. And the environments mm-hmm. that we're, we're putting ourselves in the people that we're surrounding ourselves with the things that we're do, you know, what do we spend the most of our time doing? You know, what do our days yeah. look like? So, you know, I think just a big part of that is just having awareness of it because mm-hmm. for me, at least that is something that I did not have for a very long time. Um, and once I started to gain that awareness, then I was able to start taking the steps and taking the actions toward making these changes and making things yeah. better instead of just feeling stuck and trapped in this black hole mentality is what I call it is being mm-hmm. feeling stuck and trapped and like, I can't come out of this and this is just mm-hmm. never going to get better. So I would love to ask you, you know, what things do you do to practice gratitude or self-care or what are some go-to things um, to do that for you? Sure. And I, I want to mention a quick note that just popped in my head. If I get lost, since I also have ADHD, um, <laughs> <laughs> that remind me to get back to the self-care part. Um, yes, <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but just on that, on that note, cause it's just so important and so true um, that that's really what inspired me to found this organization is that I went from being hopeless and feeling like I had no recourse. I had no power against my mental health. And as soon as I was re-diagnosed and actually knew what I was dealing with and, and that's can be a fight. And it's, it's so unfortunate that misdiagnosis happened. Like you said, there's no blame to be had, but you sometimes do have to fight and you have to find different uh, avenues and you have to do your part in speaking up about what you're experiencing. Because once you are able to kind of get, more enlightened on what's going on internally, there are so many opportunities to better your life and make change. And the empowerment that came from knowing how to make steps, again, not miracle overnight change, but steps that I had the control. It was in my control to make myself healthier. That that was unparalleled, the feeling. And I just, that's the main goal for me is for those out there to feel they can do something about their mental health. You're not trapped. You're not stuck. You have even the slightest changes in your daily life, like you're mentioning, even just trying to pick up exercise, you get a little endorphin burst, even if that only lasts 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes of a chemical endorphin that can just boost you, just balance you out a little bit. Yes. Um, and as another kind of little thing that popped in my brain there. <laughs> Um, on that same token, again, uh, just the positive outlook on your health. Um, I actually was an OBGYN of all types of doctors um, that told me this quote that made changed the way I looked at all health forever, which is, it's so common in our society to look at our health and in, this, in, in general reference our physical health, because that's easier for everyone to relate to, um, as if we're having symptoms that we are sick something is wrong with us. We are ill. There's something bad in our body, in our mind. And so we need to go to the doctor, get medicine. We need to remove it. We need to take the bad out of us, remove whatever's making us feel bad. And that's kind of our usual perspective on being sick or unwell or not hundred percent. But the other way that we can look at it is our bodies, our minds are actually created to work at capacity. I mean, this is a beautiful, wonderful magical machine. Um, And so when when we aren't 100%, what do we need to do to bring ourselves up to 100? Our bodies want to be at 100%. Our mind wants to be at 100. But sometimes we need external help. We need vitamins. We need exercise. We need medication. We need therapy. What can we do to bring ourselves back up to 100? And again, that might be back to 70, back to 85, back to 92. (laughs) Yes. But oh, yes. that's that kind of change in perspective from I'm sick. Let me get rid of what's bad about me. What's wrong with me. And let me bring myself to more wellness. Let me make myself healthier. Um, and to answer your question. Yeah, I remembered. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, things I do include, uh, you know, affirmations, which I ask all the advocates to share affirmations because I think there's such beauty in that. So if you go to the advocate page on our website, oh, you'll see yes. all of our advocates affirmations, uh, just what their core messages are to help them 
feel feel healthier and, and calmer. You know, it's okay to not be okay sometimes. There's a lot at the end of the tunnel. Um, I mean, man, the list goes on and on, but just kind of words to comfort yourself and give yourself that uh, self-compassion that you need and that strength. Wow. I, I think that's so important. And I, I really think, you know, I actually started learning about affirmations probably last year, but I, I kind of always, this is like, I, I kind of always knew what they were, but I never practiced them. I never did anything with it. You know, I'm like, Oh, an affirmation, you know, it's yeah. something, you know, you say positive, but I never would do that. And then once I started <laughs> doing this, it started to make such a world of a difference by just getting up in the morning and recognizing your blessings, right? Recognizing <laughs> here, here is where I am right now in this present moment. And I'm working towards something, right? I'm, I'm happy. I'm feeling fulfilled and just noticing, you know, who do you have in your life? Who brings you joy? You know, what things have you accomplished so far? you like, for example, for you creating rethink stigma is huge. That is huge because, <laughs> you know, you created something and started this beautiful platform that is bringing people together. And like you said, you know, hundreds over hundred advocates, that's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, having people, you guys from all over the world who, you know, are finding out about rethinkstigma.org, going on and becoming an advocate and getting involved. And it doesn't matter, you know, no matter how small or how big or whatever it is, just being able to be a part of this community, I think is so incredible because you get to connect with people and people who, who are passionate about this, people who are excited mm -hmm. about, you know, like talking about mental health and how we can make this better and how we can make these conversations more comfortable and exciting for people rather than so, you know, daunting or scary or things that we shouldn't be getting into. That's what I love about mm -hmm. it. And, you know, I love how you just said, I literally wrote this down. We can, what can we do to get back to a hundred? I think that's literally going to be the mm -hmm. title of this episode or something <laughs> along those lines, because that is incredible. Like what you just said there is so important. You guys like just doing something for yourself, right? No matter how big or how small, you know, it could be, you know, 30 minutes a day of exercise. It could be, you know, 15 minutes of like a quick YouTube workout video, or, you know, maybe you go on a walk or you make yourself a cup of tea, or, you know, you call one of your friends or, you know, you hang out with one of your family members or whatever it is, you know, just doing something every day just for you to really, you know, be like, just see that you're here in the present moment and, yeah. you know, you're alive and you have this opportunity to do what you want with your life. As long as you take action on that, as long as mm -hmm. you make it happen, as long as you are committed and you follow through on the plans that you have for yourself, you know, of course it can seem, you know, pretty overwhelming sometimes when we're talking about, you know, goals or pretty big goals. And we're like, oh man, like, I don't know how I'm ever going to do that or be able to, you know, be like this. But, you know, once we really start to make these changes in our lives and start taking care, better care of ourselves and better care of our bodies, our minds, and all of these things, we start to really be able to see all these opportunities out there that we can continue mm -hmm. to learn and grow and all of these things. So I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Sam, thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you once again for, you know, making the yeah. time out of your day to come out here on Crooked Illness and just share, you know, a little bit of your story with us, talk about Rethink Stigma, you know, share with us, you know, the mission behind it, why you created it and just like the incredible place that it is you guys. And I would definitely, I'm going to put it in the show notes, the website and all the details. So you guys can check it out, learn some more about it and follow them on social media. So, you know, thank you, Sam, again for thank coming you. out. This has been such a fun conversation. It's always a good time getting to talk with you and just thank you. Thank you. Oh, likewise. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. It's awesome to share this and thank you for being an advocate for our organization. Um, it's, it's invaluable to our mission. Um, this is not by any means the Samantha Foster Foundation. <laughs> um, it, takes, it, takes, it takes all of you guys. It takes our supporters. It takes us being able to reach different communities and people. So um, yeah, it's fantastic. And I just really appreciate your, your time here. Well, thank you. And I'm, I'm so proud to be a part of it, you guys. And it's just such an incredible community and group and place and everything. So be sure to check her out and all the awesome work she's doing at Reading Stigma. So on this note, I'm going to end it here and hope that you guys have a good rest of the day or a good rest of the night, depending on when you are listening to this episode. So I'm going to say goodbye to you guys and also goodbye to Sam. So bye, Sam. Bye.